For 400 years, servicemen and women have fought to carve out and defend freedom and the civilization we know as America. This series, On a Moment in Time, is devoted to the memory of those warriors whose sacrifice represents, in the words of Lincoln at Gettysburg, the last full measure. A Moment in Time with Dan Roberts. One of the daunting challenges of modern warfare is ensuring that communications remain secure. As code-breaking technology has progressed and skills have grown internationally, intelligence experts who are successful in penetrating command and control networks of their enemies could never be certain that the same thing had not been done to them. At the beginning of World War II, efforts to penetrate Axis communications in the European theater were increasingly successful. The Japanese were another matter. Many Japanese code specialists had been educated in the States and were familiar with American slang. In the early months of the war, they seemed to be able to listen to GI comm links with ease, or in the words of essayist William Wilson, like sand sifting through a sieve. Philip Johnston thought he had a solution. A World War II veteran and an engineer, he had been raised by missionary parents on the Navajo Indian Reservation in the Southwest, and had absorbed and was fluent in the enormously complex Navajo language. Almost no one knew it or could translate it. In short, it could be the perfect code. Johnson had read an article recalling the use of Native Americans by the Canadians for code work in the Great War and in early 1942 proposed to the Navy that they recruit and train Navajos as communications specialists in the Pacific Theater. By the end of February, the now intrigued Marines were ready for a test. Several messages were passed between Navajo volunteers at Camp Elliott in San Diego and the results were brilliant. The Indians took about 20 seconds to decode each message. The best machines took 30 minutes each. After several months in which a proposal for an aggressive program of Navajo recruitment moved with excruciating slowness up the chain of command, approval for a test program found Johnston and 30 new recruits hard at work in May. Since the Navajo language was unwritten, they first developed a phonetic alphabet. A was Wolachi, the Navajo word for ant and so on down the alphabet. Then they came up with an initial vocabulary with 211 military terms. By 1945, the Navajo dictionary was quite large with such diverse words as creek, translated tolniltsan, or very little water. Over 400 Navajos served as code specialists, principally with the Marines in the Pacific. Lieutenant General Sezo Arisu Japanese intelligence chief admitted that while they were able to crack Army and Air Corps communications, Marine codes could not be deciphered, thanks in large measure, to the Navajo code talkers, whose super-secret service remained classified until the late 1960s. At the University of Richmond, I'm Dan Roberts. Thank you.